Well, hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Genesis Chiropractic Software, I'm Dr. Tabor Smith, and we have a, a huge treat for you today. Um, we have uh, our good friend uh, and chiropractic thought leader, Roberto Monaco. He is, uh, I'll, you know, I'll let him introduce himself in just a second, but he is an amazing speaking coach. He was one of uh, Tony Robbins' top speakers, and I've been on a couple of live webinars with Roberto, and I'm, I'm not kidding you. Every single one is just packed full of value, and this one is going to be even more. It's going to be so over the top full of value that um, it's going to help us to reach more people in our community, share this message of chiropractic with more people, and it's going to be absolutely awesome. So, uh, first of all, Roberto, let me uh, just let you introduce yourself, and then I have some just some power-packed questions for you here in just a second. Cool. Hello, everybody. Roberto Monaco here from beautiful San Diego. And I have been speaking for my 12th year right now. And I'm super passionate about uh, professionals to help them to grow their business, their practices with communication, specific chiropractors, because I go to chiropractic, chiropractic here in San Diego, Dr. Ryan Hummel, and I believe in the principle, the message, and I'm super excited to have a conversation today with uh, Dr. Tabor Smith about the best practices that I have seen lately on doctor's reports and dinners and scheduling talks and things like that. So I'm super excited to be here and share a quality time with you guys today. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you, and, and uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump right into some meat okay. and potatoes here. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the way we wanted to set this webinar up is a little bit different than most webinars that you're on. Um, I am fortunate enough uh, to be the guinea pig here, almost the case study. Okay, so I practice in Houston, Texas, and um, I I am looking in the next couple of months to, I mean, bust my, you know, butt. Uh, <laughs> And get out there, I mean, hit the, the road and, and get into businesses and set up more talks. And I mean, really just double my practice this year and, 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 and increase and, and more than double, triple, quadruple the amount of events, the amount of talks that I'm doing right now in my community. And so I have some questions for you, Roberto. And I think everybody who's listening here who's in my position right now, who's running a practice and wants to just just go ahead and blow it up right now. Uh, we'll okay. benefit from this webinar. All right. Okay. So the first thing I have for you, and I know you probably get this question a lot, um, but if you're in my shoes and you are really wanting your staff to come together and you to come together and set up more more speaking engagements, more talks, okay. um, and over this next couple months, you it, you have in your in your mind this idea of what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and you are trying to, and I'm trying to like, you know, excite my staff to, to help me do this, but okay. how do I approach it? How do I start setting up more talks in my community? Okay. So, first thing, if I were a chiropractor, I'm not a chiropractor, if I were a chiropractor, here's what I'll do. The first thing, I would uh, create in my CRM or customer relationship management software or my address book or I don't know if you guys use uh, Genesis or if you use you gotta have a place where you store your contacts okay so the first thing that I start today I'll have either myself or my staff to create and enter in my CRM every speaking opportunity available within let's say 50 miles. Why 50 miles? Now obviously you gotta figure out your different markets, right? If you're in New York, maybe 25 miles and or if you're you live in Wyoming, maybe it's 100 miles. How far usually your patients travel to go and see you? Right? right. So let's say Roberto in average 50 miles, let's say, just a number. Then every Every single company, association, mastermind group, chamber of commerce, uh, Toastmasters, I mean anything, yep. any club, any, I'll, the first step, I'll start creating this database. And that's something that you, if you're a doctor, you're busy, you may not have time, but your CA always can carve an hour a day. So start going to websites, directories, and you, and you need the phone number, the website, the email, and the person contact. Okay. 
Okay. Why that's important? Because if I live, for example, and I see all these businesses, because all these businesses have sales meetings, they have staff meetings, they have sales rallies, they have events. My psychology is not like, hey, can I come and speak? My psychology is when. It's not like can. When? Right. Oh, you're booked. We have someone for July. That's okay. How about August? Booked. September? Uh, booked. October? Oh, you don't have anybody. So for me, it's not about like if I can go and speak to your organization or company. It's just when. Right. So that's number one thing. And you don't realize like how many speaking opportunities. Yeah. There's meetings, sales. There's everywhere. So you got to organize. That's number one. Step number one. Step number two, I want you to turn around and and you look your patients because your patients right now either they they're entrepreneurs, right? They work for a company, they work for the government, they work for a nonprofit, or they retire. Is that it? Yeah. And yeah. every single now, if they work for the government, they have meetings. If they if the entrepreneurs, most likely they go to coaching groups or chambers. If they go for if they work for a big company, they have sales meeting staff. If they have nonprofits, they have events. And for the retire, a lot of retired people they still go and they hang out with other people. They have events, they have get-togethers. So all of them are source of speaking opportunities. So we want to be proactive in building a database. Why? Because you're always going to keep working on it. So that's the step number one. And nine, uh, I don't want to say 100 out of 100 because that's not fair, but I'm here to tell you that 99 out of 100 doctors that I talk to, they don't have it. They just don't have it. So you're going to have a database of speaking opportunities, step number one. You do okay. it. Step number two, and you're going to have, to have a, a killer talk. Yes. Have a killer yes. talk. Because you don't want to go, you don't want to go all the work to finding these people, connect, show there, and you speak and you don't produce results, right? For yourself, you don't help people. So you gotta have a killer talk. And yeah. what I found is that if you, like Dr. Tabor, if you're gonna go fishing, right? Mm -hmm. And you have your hook, what do you put in the end of the hook to get the fish? What is it? The bait. The bait, right? Now, do you eat bait? Yes or no? No. <laughs> no. But the fish does, right? The fish right. does. Yeah. So we gotta give the fish what the fish wants. Right. So what do people want? Right. So they want to live longer. They wanna avoid cancer. They wanna increase their sex drive. They wanna just stop taking medication. They want to have more energy, vitality. They wanna live a life without stress. So you figure out they want to increase, if you're going to corporate, increase productivity. So you want to give what the fish wants. You don't want to talk about chiropractic. Don't lead to chiropractic. Now, I understand chiropractic. Chiropractic is life-changing. I'm all about chiropractic, but they, they, that is not a conversation they have in their minds. Right. That conversation is I don't feel good. i overweight. I'm tired. I'm taking medicine. i, I got to take like 20 cups of coffee a day because... I cannot do my work. That's like so you gotta match the conversation. So you gotta have a talk. Now obviously you and I both know doctors and I know the power of chiropractic and I know it, in any health component, chiropractor, the nervous system is the base, the core, the foundation. But you right. don't lead into that because they are not that's not what they wanna hear. And you're gonna so you wanna give because ultimately that's gonna be the answer for the problems. We know that. Right. But you've got to lead with a conversation they have in their minds to match the conversation. So got to have a talk. Then, so you have the database, then you have your talk. And your talk should be anywhere from 30 to – should be anywhere actually from 15 to 45 minutes. Why 15? Look, there's a, if, you, if you watch any of those uh, videos from TAD Talks, right, which we love, 18 minutes – and a lot of people in 18 minutes have, have been, you know, influencing millions of people's lives. So you, you got to be able to walk in a room and communicate a chiropractic message in 15, 18 minutes. You have to and be powerful and believe that you can move people into an appointment. You have, if you don't have the psychology, then speaking may not be for you. Now, obviously, if you're doing a doctor's reporting group, 
and you and you, you gotta overcome all these objections because you're talking about the financial. That's a different conversation. I mean, you gotta be able to do that. Right. So the reason I say uh, we teach influenceology methodology, we build the talks into chunks. So chunks are basically a blocks of persuasive information, which has four parts: claim, evidence, illustration, questions. Okay. So what happens is you these chunks or these blocks of information you can expand if you need to. So let's say a half an hour talk can become an hour talk. Or if you're supposed to speak for an hour and you arrive there, they have half an hour, you can compress your talks too. So you gotta yeah. have a talk. So let's say you have your list, you have your talk, then you wanna create some marketing material. Now obviously, if you are starting out, I said, Roberto, I don't have a footage of me speaking, I don't have a website for, for speaking, but at least you wanna create a one page a one page flyer about your your speaking services. You gotta have at least one page. Okay. At least. Because the first thing, if you prospect a company, the first thing you're gonna say, okay, who is this guy? Send some information. First thing. Now think about it. If you want someone to go and speak in your clinic, for example, what's the, what you what's the first thing that you want to think about? Who is this guy or who is this girl? What's the topic and testimonials? So what I found is that gradually with time you keep improve upon. I, I have I build up a page in my company called influenceology.com forward, forward slash speak. Influenceology.com forward slash speak. So I have a bunch of videos, I have testimonials, I have my topics, but obviously it takes some time. But you can start today though, just put a little one page. So here's some of the major things that you want to do. You want to have a picture, you want to have a couple testimonials, not as testimonials as, some, so as much as you as a doctor, but as you're speaking. I, I, I saw Dr. Uh, Tabor's uh, speaking is amazing because I learned X, Y, Z. So testimonials in your speaking services. Right? Right. You want to have a so picture, testimonials, a little short bio. Okay. And then you can talk about this uh, health and wellness workshops. In these workshops, you're going to learn and a lot of takeaways. I and give like a lot of benefits. What kind of information uh, uh, take away people the, the things that the audience gonna walk away after yeah. hearing you speak? So after you participate in this workshop, you'll be able to you know right. eliminate yeah. the three killers. You'll be able to benefit, but so you wanna have that. And and you can have a doesn't have to be super fancy, but I'm telling you, when you contact a company or let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little script that I do, but they want to ask you. So make sure you have it. So now you have your database. Now you have a killer talk, and now you have a marketing material. All the, I would start adding more and more with time, and okay. then it's time to get speaking gigs. Now I my belief is this: is that every person that I talk to every single day it can lead me to an a speak opportunity. It's very simple. Every person that I meet, that I talk to, can lead me to an speak opportunity. And let me prove to you, okay? So let's say I'm a doctor, and I know my client Bob works for a company, okay? Which I know if you listen to me right now, that's, that happens a lot. And then say, Bob, I noticed that you work at XYZ company, is that correct? Yes. How long have you been working with them? For 10 years? Okay, good. Have you ever wondered or noticed that if they have meetings or sales meetings, or sales rallies, or lunch and learns? Now, they all have it because they do have meetings. They have lunch yeah. and learns. Yeah. I mean, out of 100 companies, maybe one doesn't have any meeting. I mean, there's companies, people, they got you got to be like, yeah, we do. Right. Then you go, and then you follow up another question. Have you noticed if they have speakers there or outside speakers? Yeah, they do. And then you say, look, this year, my mission here in Houston, I want to help 500 families to improve their quality of lives. And I need your quick uh, quick help from you. Do you mind introduce me to the person in charge of organizing these meetings? Because I'd love to be considered as one of the uh, speakers in your company. They'll be like, no problem. Right. So now, you have your assistant follow up with Bob. And Bob say, hey, here's the person. 
or, or Bob can say, can he send an email to the person and to you? Depends, right? So, and now we have a lead, and then you always want to meet the person, you have a conversation. Nobody's going to hire you before you talk to them. Right. So, you're going to have a conversation with the phone, and the conversation is a, is 100% a about them. It'd be like, look, what's important to you? Uh, how, how can I wow you? Uh, my, my questions, when you're having this conversation, for example, I ask three questions. I say, uh, what do you want your audience, your team to believe by the time you're done? How do you want them to feel? What do you want them to do? And they're going to say, oh, I want them to believe that health is important. I want them to feel inspired. I want them to uh, start working out or whatever it is. Right. Right. So then we have a conversation, and then uh, if, if the company is local company, and if it's a, a, a company or maybe a chamber of commerce, or someone has a lot of influence, I recommend to take someone for coffee and talk about it. I cannot tell you that speaking, I, I have a, a video that I recorded, and I tell the story in our events. Four years ago, someone invited me to do a talk for free in Atlanta. And I didn't want to do it because it was free. I'm like, dude, fly to Atlanta one day, speak, and come back three days. And they're not paying me, no hotel. Right. And they didn't allow me to sell my stuff. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. It's crazy. But they had this gut. I'm like, no. You always say yes to presentation opportunities. And right. I went. And once I spoke, Dr. Tabor, I met this person. And this person introduced me to this group. I done more. No, I'm not trying to exaggerate here. I would say at least at least 50 speaking gigs and probably 30 of them paid because I went to that time that meeting so you just you never know nice you know, yes. you never now have I done a speaking gig and wasn't good yes as far as results yes yeah right. of course I have but I'm telling you I have a belief that every single time I open my mouth magical things happen I believe right. that yeah. doesn't mean money could it be a friendship? Could it be I can inspire someone to make a decision? I just feel good about it because now my, my sole purpose is reaching more people. So right. I adopt belief too. So I, I feel, and then remember that speaking is an ongoing thing. So going, going back to the script. Now let's say someone is an entrepreneur, a patient. Come back and say, Bob, you have a company here for three years. Is that correct? Yes. So yeah, I noticed that you do, you know, you, were, you do coaching. Great, excellent. Now, as an entrepreneur, Bob, do you go to any masterminds or chamber of commerce associations? Oh, yeah, I go to this club, club or association. Oh, excellent. Have you ever noticed if they have uh, speakers? Oh, yeah, all the time. You know, Bob, I need a help from you. This this year, my mission is to help 500 families here in Houston to improve the quality of lives. Do you know who is the person in charge of organizing these meetings and hiring speakers? And if you could introduce me to them, to he or she, it would be awesome. Oh, no problem. Then you have a to follow up. And then all of a sudden, within a week, you have 10 leads and you close two or three, and now we start the balling. It's, it's kind of like a uh, snowball, right? One here, one there. And now what's great about is this. Let's say you haven't had speak experience yet but then when if you have your first gig I believe in promoting an event before the event during the event and after the event I maximize the promotion so I'm like hey I can't wait to be I'll be speaking so and so company or I'll be speaking so and so chamber while I'm there I have people taking picture posting I encourage them and then after I post was a pleasure meeting this group so I'm always getting the bus so now my network people who are like oh I didn't know Dr. Tabor is speaking oh that's cool so that's how we started speaking is not a magic obviously there's some companies out there that chiropractors can hire and one of my clients that actually hired this you pay I think $2,500 and you get 10 talks I haven't done those, so I don't know the quality. Hmm. Some chiropractors really like that. That's not an option. But one thing that we we have is the that I would encourage you guys to change today is the mindset that if you have a hundred patients that you see, you have a hundred speaking opportunities right there. That's true. Yep. I mean right there. So you talk about the guy who worked in a company, you talk about the entrepreneur. How about the guy who non profit organizations? Let me tell you, non profit they do all day long events. 
Right. I have a doctor that I work with in Colorado. He's a master of doing non-profit for church. He called the church and say, "Hey, you want to do? I want to help other church. Why don't you charge twenty bucks to do a health class? Right. You keep the money. I bring the food. Boom. So it's kind of like there's you. You just have to commit with one strategy. Uh, I think the most effective one, you put the database together, you have a talk because you have confidence, you put a marketing material, and you start with your patients. Because if you're working with 50 people now, right? Yeah. obviously, if you work with the kids, maybe kids, they don't, they don't lead, or maybe their school, I don't know. But I'm saying, you, I guarantee, remember, they are, if they work for a company, it's a lead. Yeah. If the entrepreneurs, look, I'm an entrepreneur, I go to coaching stuff, I go to events. Right, I'm a lead for you. If you look for the government, we know they have meetings of the time. If a non-profit, they know they have meetings. Now, retire might be a little challenge, but some retired people who are very active, they still go to groups. They still go to a Lions Club, for example. Right. Because mo I, I guarantee, now, most of your patients, they may have been into a lecture, Ted, you done, mm -hmm. but they don't know, Ted, you want to go and speak. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, this is my doctor. He'll, they would love to help you. But you yeah. have to be ready to ask, to follow up. You just, like, have one page marketing piece, you know, speaking services. Yes. And you start today and make a list of, like, have your CA own the project. I know you're busy. Say, look, we're going to have this speaker opportunity database. Every patient that comes here, eventually you're going to have this conversation. Right. Yep. So, so tell me this, Roberto. It, help me with being more effective during my talks okay? okay so you know and I and I've set up I've had I talk occasionally in the next okay. couple months I'm telling you like we're coming back to this we have to do another webinar or what but I am, we are like maximizing my talks I'm getting out in my community from now on and but I want to be more effective you know I don't know if it's the structure of my talk or maybe it's my clothes or, or how can you help me to just get more people to understand my mission and to, and to come into my office and for my help. Okay. All right. So there's there's couple things that I see. By the way, when it comes to organize a talk, I spend 16 hours in a weekend doing that. So I want to be realistic here. So wow. we don't have 16 hours today, wow. but I will give you all some tools here today. Okay. Okay. So I want to give you. I want, I want to talk uh, in the realm of making any presentation more effective. Okay. Any. So if it is five minutes to five hours, five days. I want to make sure, you, at the least, you got to be doing that. Number one, the reason for our existence is to always solve a problem. If you look in your realm of like, okay, why I have an iPhone, why I have a book here, why I have a pen, eventually, is to solve a problem, right? I have a problem here. I couldn't write. I yep. couldn't talk to people, and I didn't know. Now I want to know. So, so everything that we do is to solve a problem. And I always remember this, that the only reason we are presenting to solve a problem, and before we present the information, you want to create the need for it. So instead of just going in and half an hour, an hour, talk about it, remember this, every little, let's say I'm going to have three ideas or four ideas or five ideas, I want to build up the need for each idea individually. I want to create the need Okay. Or the problem before I reveal the idea. Okay, that is uh, in your audience's mind. There's always two images: what it is, and the image what's going to look like. Right. And you have to contrast that all day long. Right? So, so for instance, in my talk, let's say like I started out with. Um, you know the the reason why the top killers in in the, in the United States are heart disease, cancer, and and in our medical system, um, and then I tie that into the reason why is because everybody's basing their health off of how they look or how they feel, not how they function, and what controls that nervous system okay. is or what okay. controls the functions that nervous Perfect. system. Perfect. Right. So let me show. Let me let me share something with you. You right now. This is really important. You're gonna like this. In influence, if I tell you something, you may doubt me. Correct. Right. Now, when you tell me, as the audience member, is truth, you just right. told me. So I can come here, and, and like you said before, the reason the top three killers is because most people 
uh, have this belief that health is how look how we feel. Who said that? The speaker, right? Right. So here's how I set it up. I set it up in my, in my in my clients' talks. Again, I'm not chiropractor, but my clients' talks like this. I right. just say, so what is so like? I have people think in terms of like, what do you really want? Do you want to travel? Do you want to do you want to write a book? Do you want to speak? Do you want to take your family to a vacation? What's a goal you have? What's your dream? What's your vision? I get people excited, and then I say, what is the one thing that has to be there? That if it's not there, then you'll never be able to achieve it. So people take a while to go, oh, maybe money, time. Yeah, that's true. But what's something that if it's not there, eventually someone says health. They say, mm -hmm. so, right? Because if you don't have health, if you die today, can you achieve these goals? No. So is it fair to say that health is your most important thing? People say yes. And then I go, Look at the reasoning behind it. So if you are telling, now change the language, if you are telling me if health is your most important asset or priority, then who is in charge? Okay? They want to say, I, I am. Right. Now, he, he, I'm leading to, to answer your question. Then I go, okay, if you are telling me health is the most important and you are telling me that you are in charge, how, check this out. How do you define health? Please write this down. Now, what do you think, Dr. Tabor, they're going to come up with, the average person? Um, you know, if I, if I exercise, I'm healthy, or if I, if I okay. eat fruits exactly. and vegetables, I'm healthy. Yes. Right. And then the, you're going to give a minute, and then you're going to get all the participation. So, Bob, what is health? Oh, health is uh, looking good, is working out, is being stress-free. And you're going to align with the audience. You never want to make sure. That, you never want to make the audience wrong. Never. You're going to align with them. Right. And then you're going to go. Okay. Then you're going to say, before I became a doctor, I used to believe that health is how we look, how we feel. As a matter of fact, I have been asking this question for a long time. And I got all kinds of answers. But it's fair to say that if I compile all these answers you guys give today, it, uh, that if in one line I would say that health is how look how we feel. How many of you would say that's true? Now people are going to raise their hands. Now you got them. And then you say this. You say, as a doctor that been practicing for the last eight years, uh, my belief is that this belief, this belief, of how we look, how we feel, equals health, is ah. the main reason that we live in this in this uh, health chaos right now. Because let me ask you this: Is America a healthy or a sick country? Sick. And then you say, "Let me prove to you." Then you link the belief: how I look, how I feel. To the cancer. You see, I didn't That's tell. Great. They told me. So, so, let, so, so look what I've done so far. They told me health is more important. They <clears> told me they're in charge. And elegantly, I want to say again, elegantly, I asked them, okay, if you're telling me health is most important to you to achieve your goals, and you're charging me, and you're telling me that you're in charge, how you define this thing then? Now, and then elegantly, I just say, hey, that belief that you have is not working. Right. And yeah. elegantly, so now, are you following me so far? I Absolutely. link the belief about a health, how we look, how we feel, because it is one of the major causes of, that I talk about the cancer and the heart disease and the drugs and the surgery. And then as I go through all these things and stories and, and, and getting commitment, do you know someone who suffers from cancer, heart disease, da, da, da. And then I go, well, how many of you would you like to learn a new definition of health so you and your family you don't become part of those statistics. Oh man, that's good, man. They're gonna say what? Yeah. And then you go, okay. Health is function. If every then you talk about a hundred percent function of your organs. If you're hundred percent functioning, everything is functioning perfectly, can you get cancer? Can you have disease? No, 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 no. And then you go, by the way, what controls function? As you listen to me right now, as you write stuff down, as you're breathing, as you, right now, as you're breathing, as you're excited, you're learning what's controlling, who's sending them, who, what's controlling. And then people want to be like, oh, uh, and then you point, someone's going to say the brain. 
Exactly. So your brain now is sending messages to your hand to write stuff down, correct? And 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 then you go in. Then then only then you talk about the brain, the spinal cord, and the organs. And then you're going to introduce the subluxation. You see the whole thing. A lot of doctors say, "Hey, it's too much telling." Yeah. I'm just leading them, and I'm right. like, "Hey, you told me." So here's what I've done so far. You told me that health is the most important thing. You told me you're in charge. Okay. And you and I agree that your current definition is not good. And if you keep that definition, what's going to happen to you in your family? What's going to happen? Uh, you're going to be sick. Yeah, sick. So then we don't That's like awesome. that. And you and I were introduced to what? a new definition. Yeah. And this new definition supports the chiro chiro talk, and then you go yes. to the chiro talk, and then you talk about the chiropractic, the, the nervous system, the spine, the organs, and then introduce the subluxation. Man, yeah. Dude, that is like that is opening up my field of vision yeah. right now. Like I, I just, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know if everybody else is watching this, but like I am literally gonna go back and watch this replay over and over mm -hmm. that little section that you just had yeah. and. Write that down. Oh, no, there's more. There's more. There's uh, more. Man. But then when I talk about subluxation, because look, I, I, I have 3,400 talks, 11,000 hours on presentation coaching. Very few people have 11,000 hours of, uh, of uh, public speaking presentation coaching. And then I, I developed this team, super proud. We talk a little brief, briefly on uh, Kyle Top this webinar. As a patient, when I heard subluxation, it's like a brand new thing. Right? And then you talk about the chiro, chiro talk, and then at one point, if you're doing a five-minute talk or two-minute talks, then you go, by the way, here's the most important part. Write sword down, subluxation. And then they write the word, and then you say, there's seven things you got to know about this thing. I call the seven secret subluxation, and then I go secret number one. You don't, you don't necessarily feel that. Then you explore that chunk. Then you talk about number two, uh, subluxation leads to degeneration of the spine and impact the quality of life. Develop that chunk. Number three, that everybody, everybody who have a spine can have subluxations. And then here I'm, I'm plugging in the seed of them bringing their family to get checked and referrals. Then I joke around it. I say, "How many of you have friends? Do they have spines? Kids? Do they have spines? Does anybody have a someone with no spines? Kind of like having fun." Yeah. And people are like, "No." So everybody could have it. So not only you don't feel cause generation, everybody has it. Number four, I I talk about look uh, yoga and nutrition and exercise cannot do anything about it. Mm. Right? And then you say, is yoga good for you? Of course. Is uh, eating whole food broccoli good for you? Of course. But let me ask you this. If if you have if your disc is subluxated, do you think eating whole food broccoli is gonna fix that? Yes or no? No. No? no. If it, if your spine is putting pressure on nerves, it's going to your heart, do you think do you think that doing yoga is gonna fix that? No. I love yoga, I love nutrition, but it won't work. Right? Yeah, right. Number five, the only doctors legally trained and licensed to identify correct minimize subluxations are who? Are who guys? You ask this question. Then you say, no, no, just me. Right? It's kind of <laughs> joke. It's a joke, it's a joke built in. Say, of course, chiropractors. Right? <laughs> Number six, I right, is the the best way to know is by doing X-ray. And I know some of the doctors have a different technology here, so be flexible. And the seven, and then you say the seven is the most important one. This is the most important thing that you gotta know about subluxation. The sooner you identify and correct it, the better. Mm. Now let me ask you this: If you have a cavity in your teeth, when you'd like to know, on day one or after your <laughs> teeth is, you give that stuff, and that so not, and then from because if you, the seven secrets. I already preframe your whole clothes. Yeah. And then depends how much time you have. You can that chunk leads into phase one, two, and three. You can talk about that. And then you go into storytelling. Depend wow. again. The, you, you tell some before and after X-rays, and then you close.
Because wow. all your clothes now, you see, is I already addressed all your clothes in seven secrets. Why yeah. now? Why do I gotta go to X-ray? Why right. do I gotta bring my family? So, yeah. But I, I answer that in a teaching format, so they're having fun, I'm like, right. and they're taking notes. So this yeah. framework is is just deadly. Look, with everything I know about public speaking presentation. At this point in my career, I've been coaching chiropractic now almost two years now. I, I personally, if I get a degree tomorrow, that's how I would go present chiropractic. Yeah. yeah, there's more. I have a lot of tricks in my bags, a lot of stuff that I do, but I want to provide value to you today and give a killer framework. So. Yes. Well, I can see why it takes 16 hours of one day to get through all of your, you know, your seminar and all this yeah. information. Um, okay, so. So help me with this, and you know, lead this into your closing, and and share, help us by telling us where we can find more information from you. But let me let me ask you this, you know, I don't just want to do talks in my community. I mean, I do, but I want to be, I literally want to be a great speaker someday. I and, and I, I mean, I want to be great. I want to be like the best in my area. I want people around Houston going. This guy can can speak. He's a great speaker. He, and not just great information, but like he's got a presence. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you might, and and there might be a lot to that, obviously. But mm -hmm. just from a just from your heart and from personal, like, what would your advice be to somebody who wants to be a great great All right. speaker? All right. So I a couple of advice. Uh, can you guys see the the books in the back there? Yes. All right. Yes. I, I so the first thing couple, I'm gonna give you a couple things. I I, I probably have read more books on presentation, public speaking, and I still buy them. And my fiance goes, "Why you keep buying them? Right. Teach for them?" Because I read the whole 300 pages to get one nugget. And I'm yeah. here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that if you feel you're a great communicator, but you're not ongoing, consistent studying, there's a lot more room for it to improve. You can be great, but so it's kind of like I always studying because yes. for me. Life is about influence, not manipulation, influence. But influence like every time you I'm open my mouth, you, you have a chance to help someone really improve their life. So I, I really take my business and I know take your business serious too. The yeah. second uh, the second tip is just say yes to presentation opportunities. Just yeah. say yes. Yeah. And and make part of your of your weekly meetings with staff. Like look, my goal this week we're gonna set up two talks. Yeah. And let's do it and make part of it. And I'll tell you, and even Dr. Zeno talked about at uh, the Carol Talk Leaders webinar. He goes, dude, speaking is my favorite thing. He even said it on camera. It's my favorite thing. And really is, uh, I, I don't, I, I feel that if I'm a chiropractor, obviously you've got to be a great doctor, be able to, to heal people, I obviously. But right. it's, isn't it cool to be able to educate people and talk about the principle to more people, I? Right. So I think speaking once you become good at it and it's like you you are addicted to it. You love it. When I go a couple of weeks without speaking, I'm like, dude, I'm, ah, I I miss <laughs> that. So number one, keep studying. Two, say yes to presentation opportunities. And if you have a chance, go to live trainings. We have a killer uh, event here in San Diego that I do in 2014. With, with, Five we done uh, we done three times already. I'm sorry, two times, and then I have a class July sold out. Cannot take anybody. Then I have a class in October, December. You can learn more about uh, our class at influencingfromthefront.com. Influencingfromthefront.com, and is we do the small classes and you speak in the whole weekend. So I would say if you want to improve, then it has to be part of in, like any other skill. You just have to work on it. Awesome. And just because, and here's what, another thing too. Just because a lot of people who have no problem or have no fear, having no fear of speaking is is kind of like I know how to run. So can can you imagine <laughs> you running against an Olympic athlete right now? Yeah, you right. can run. Five minutes, but you're gonna run. Or it does like you just kind of comparison. So there's hours and like, so work on it. Work in your story. You work on your clothes. Work on your questions and your frameworks. I'm here right. to tell you that after 11 years doing this, I feel like I don't know much. Believe it or not, it's weird. <laughs> but there's so much. Look, speaking or combines psychology, 
combines stuff from NLP, from hypnosis, from uh, human behavior, from mm. art, from design. There's so many fields from rhetoric, from argumentation, from dialectic. So many fields into one thing. That's just so much. I love it. I'm like, I, stu I, I study everything. Some months I go study argumentation. Some months I study dialectic. Some some months I study influence. Some months some months I mean just, I just go because there's so much. So just get excited because look, it's not. I always in my live presentations, I always ask this: Why would someone spend four years in in a class learning to become an expert and don't spend a lot of time learning how to communicate expertise? And if right. you think about the top three percent of every industry, every industry, they are out there speaking. I, I don't even call public speaking, I call public leading. Basically, public speaking is a tool of leadership. That's all there is to it. So I really encourage you to embrace that, have fun with it. I haven't seen anybody who's perfect. There's no there's no perfect speaker. And I'm not perfect by far. I just I every every talk that I after my 3,400, I'm sure I, I made a lot of mistakes, still make mistakes, but I'm always the mindset of improving, 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 and taking the next level. So, Awesome. Well, I can definitely tell you're an expert. I mean, you're good. And and I, I mean that sincerely, like, I enjoy hearing you speak. I, I enjoy being on the webinars with you, and um, I just want to personally thank you for this was kind of a coaching session that you yeah. gave us. And yep. uh, on behalf of Genesis Chiropractic Software, we appreciate your time and doing this webinar for us. I know you had mentioned, I'm just going to tell the, the viewers out there, uh, more information and, and how we can you know, learn more from you. It, you had yep. mentioned influencingfromthefront.com. Or Influenceology. Yeah. Or, and I want or, to see uh, Or Influenceology.com. Thanks to Dr. Uh, Brian Capra, too. Dr. Yes. Brian Capra came to our class. And I'm super excited. He spoke at when we spoke together two months ago, and it was really fun too. So awesome. it's cool. It's cool. It's really is. I want I want to inspire you for nothing, guys, to embrace communicating to groups of people and have fun with it. It's fun because you really, if you think about it nowadays, everybody's here. I is everybody's here. But yes. then when you go to an event and you speak and you have someone's attention for five minutes, ten minutes, it's huge. Think about right. it. It is, Huge. and you really have the power to transform a life forever. Uh, That's all. I think it's just killer. Oh. Awesome. Well, thank you again, and again, ladies and gentlemen, we'll try to have some links for you down below. Influencingfromthefront.com and influenceology.com. This Mr. Roberto Monaco, the main man, right there. Thanks so much, my brother. Oh man, when I hold you accountable now, when I hold you yes. accountable, I wanna, I wanna see the the database. I wanna see the flyer, and I oh, wanna I'll see. I'll be checking in with you. Absolutely. I'll be All checking right. in. All right. Good night. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everybody.